Hello, welcome to Quality Food Safety 101. This is Arsalan, and today we continue our HACCP series. Today we will talk about the critical limits, which is principle number three and step number eight in our HACCP journey. So as always, let's start with a quick recap. In our process flow diagram, we arrange all our process uh, steps in a sequence, uh, sequential manner. So let's suppose there were uh, 20 steps in our process flow. Those steps after verification went into the hazard analysis where we distinguish between significant and insignificant hazards or the process steps which were having insignificant or significant hazards. The insignificant hazards as we discussed are going to be controlled through our prerequisite programs or control measures. The significant hazards go into the next step of CCP determination or CCP decision tree. Within the CCP decision tree which we discussed in the last video and if you have not seen that video I will leave a link up here and also in the description. We decide that those significant hazards are actually critical control points or not. So after that, some of the steps qualify furthermore and they become actual critical control points and rest of them are not critical control points. We call them as control points or CPs. In HACCP, those are also controlled through our prerequisite program. Although in other standards, we also have a plan for them. Like in ISO 22000, we have a plan for control points or we call them as OPRPs, Operational Prerequisite Program. That's a different topic altogether. And we will make a video for ISO to discuss that. So coming back to our CCPs. Once we have our CCPs, which is the uh, second principle of HACCP, now all the activities or all the major work has to be done on those steps which become CCPs. And critical limit is the first step after getting the CCP. So this is, as I said, this is principle number three and step number eight. So what are critical limits? Let's talk about that. Critical limits are the values which have to be monitored on critical control points. Okay, this is the basic definition of a critical limit, but there is more important information associated with that. So there are some important points which I'm going to explain to you now. Number one point is, as I said, critical limits are values. They are not a step. They are not a process step. They are not a standard. They are a number or a series of numbers or maybe two different numbers merged together. That have all of these things I'll explain to you in a few minutes. So they are values or numbers which have to be monitored on a CCP or critical control point. The number one property of a critical limit is that it is going to distinguish between safe or unsafe uh, step or it will distinguish between that whether this process is under control or out of control. So let me give you an example now. Let's suppose we are on the step of cooking which is the CCP in the kitchen catering industry and the, and the critical limit says that cooking should happen at a temperature of 75 degrees Celsius core temperature for three seconds. So now there are two values now here 75 degrees Celsius and three seconds. If we achieve this temperature and time combination, we call that cooking has happened successfully and this step is now safe or the food produced as a result of this step is safe. But if this uh, critical limit is not achieved, then till the time this is not achieved, the step is unsafe. So this is how I meant that critical limits distinguish between safe and unsafe practices or safe and unsafe steps. This brings me to the second uh, property of the critical limit. The second property is that this is always a single value. It can be expressed as a minimum or a maximum of a value, but never it will be never a range. For example, I cannot say that my cooking temperature should be between 70 to 75. No, it has to be a single value. I can say that it has to be minimum 75. So it means that above 75, everything is good or okay, but less than 75 is not good. So this is a good or acceptable expression of a critical limit, but I cannot say a range. Or another example can be that uh, the chiller temperature for my CCP should be between 5 till 12. So this is a range that's not acceptable because then how do you know 
where when you deviate from a, a critical limit so in that regards critical limit can never be a range it has to be a single value so in the case of a chiller or a refrigerator for a ccp we say let's suppose 5 degrees celsius or less than 5 is acceptable above 5 is not acceptable so 5 is the uh, critical limit now here comes the third property sometimes critical limits can be a combination of two numbers or two values for example as i explained just few minutes before that 75 degrees celsius as the temperature and time was three seconds so this is a combination of two values two units but they are two individual different units none of them is a range and both of them combined together to give me a safe step or a safe control process so in some cases this is also very valid that there are two values which work together but those both of them are individual and none of them are range right so this brings us to the next uh, property of critical limit which is that critical limits are always measurable it cannot be that we assign a critical limit to a ccp which is immeasurable or we don't have the capability to measure it or maybe it is too vague to measure in that case then our ccp will always be in doubt and it will be always maybe un uncontrolled basically and it will not be safe uh, because we cannot monitor the critical limit assigned to that particular ccp so it has to be based on the uh, criteria that it is measurable so let's talk about uh, when there is a scenario that critical limits are not achieved and the process is unsafe so hypothetically we take example of a cooling mechanism or a cooling process where we supposed to uh, cool down our food from uh, hot to uh, 5 degrees celsius uh, within a certain amount of time and our critical limit was that we need to achieve 5 degrees celsius within 4 hours just giving an example now this is not a real scenario i'm just giving an example the cooling uh, mechanism or the cooling laws are different but in our example the temperature of the food from hot temperature above 60 degrees celsius has to be cooled down to 5 degrees celsius in 4 hours and we did not achieve this critical limit and it is already four and a half hours and when we check the temperature uh, it is showing that uh, it is the temperature is still 10 degrees celsius so our critical limit has been violated this is called as a deviation when we do not achieve our critical limit this is called as deviation and in this scenario there is a requirement to do a corrective action Corrective actions are another principle uh, or uh, another codex logic sequence step which will come uh, in the sequence after one step. After critical limit we have monitoring then we have uh, corrective actions. So we will talk about them in detail at that time. So once the critical limit is not achieved that is called as a deviation. That is number one important thing to remember. Right. Apart from critical limits we also talk about target levels. Target levels are very very important to keep a buffer between the critical limit and the deviation uh, why because as soon as you uh, pass beyond the critical limit you go into a deviation and you have to do a corrective action so better that we set our targets lower than the critical limit or we keep a buffer between that so that we never cross our critical limit so i'll give you an example so let's suppose uh, your critical limit as per the law for a refrigerator or a chiller is 5 degrees celsius to maintain a temperature of 5 degrees celsius but there are some scenarios or there are some uh, could be some reasons that the temperature goes beyond 5 and in every of those scenarios you might need to do a corrective action so it will become a very big hassle for the company to keep doing uh, a situation or keep undergoing a deviation and corrective action so generally in food industry we say that okay the target level for our chiller is 3 degrees celsius so we always main, try to maintain 3 degrees celsius temperature so that we have a 2 degree celsius buffer with us and we never cross our uh, critical limit and we do not do a corrective action at all so that's example of our target level so target levels are more strict or more stringent criteria which are maintaining organization to keep a buffer between the critical limits so that we never go into a deviation or a corrective action scenario right so if our critical limit is 5 degrees celsius and our uh, target is 3 degrees celsius the 2 degrees between them is called as tolerance so whenever we end up into tolerance we do preventive actions so that we never go into a uh, critical limit uh, deviation so these are the different terminologies which we need to remember so target level then tolerance is between the critical limit and uh, target level where we do preventive actions 
and then if we go beyond our uh, critical limit we are in the deviation and we do corrective actions one very very important thing to remember here we are about to end this video of critical limit but very important thing to remember here is critical limits as i said before as well should be measurable and they should be set in such a way that they should ensure the safety of the food there is no point in having a critical limit which is so uh, loose or maybe not regulated by the law or maybe not not scientifically proven that our process is uh, not clearly safe so always we set our critical limit based on known factors based on the law and based on the scientific logic which will make our process safe and our ccps will become safe so these are the important things to remember about critical limits uh, this is a short uh, video as you can see uh, critical limits are not very uh, difficult topic on the uh, next topic which we'll talk about will be about monitoring this will be very interesting as well so do subscribe to the channel and like the video spread the knowledge uh, this as i have been saying that this is a free uh, channel for everybody to gain knowledge about food safety and food quality see you in the next one